Let's give it up for Pierre. <laughs> yes, okay. Hello, Helsinki. How are you doing tonight? Yes. Everybody is drunk? Yeah. Yes, of course you are. It's uh, seven o'clock on a Tuesday in Finland. <laughs> yes, uh, hello. This is what I sound like. This is the voice and the accent you're going to be listening to for the next hour or so. Sound like Björk if her uh, testicles would ever drop. <laughs> I, uh, my name is uh, Hugleikur Dagsson. It is uh, not the uh, easiest uh, name to pronounce, but uh, there is a trick to it. Uh, my name, Hugleikur Dagsson, sounds exactly like the chorus to the song uh, Who Let the Dogs Out. <laughs> So you can imagine my breath with insanity when that song was popular. Everywhere I went was like, Hulay Gordagson! Ho, 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 ho! It's like, oh my God, is the schizophrenia finally kicking in? I'm hearing voices shouting my name and barking. My brain is being invaded by the man of Baja. But that's just like a part of my name, Hulay Gordagson. It means uh, mind game son of the day. And, uh, but my full name is Thorarin Hulekur Dagsson Eldjarn Hafstad, which means Thor's Eagle, Mind Game, Son of the Day, Fire Iron, a place by the sea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what my name means. Yeah, my, 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 my parents got very stoned and uh, <laughs> named me after the back cover of an uh, 80s heavy metal album. <laughs> just, just, uh, let's name him all of this. All these songs. I'm glad they just named me after the back cover, because if they would name me after the front cover, my name would be uh, Meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, this is my final show on my tour, the Son of the Day tour. I'm so happy to be here in Finland. I, I ended uh, on purpose in Finland because you apparently like my stuff. I'm very happy about it. Thanks for paying my rent. Um, <laughs> but I started out in like uh, the sad countries. Uh, I started out in Serbia and Croatia because I think like people have to be very depressed or like suicidal to like uh, my sort of humor. And uh, that's why I'm ending in Helsinki because uh, <laughs> yes, the only country. <laughs> The only country in the world that's more depressed than Iceland, you know? <laughs> Crying in the dark is an Olympic sport over here. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I was telling like Serbia about this, like Serbia and Croatia, and I felt like they had kind of a rivalry, like Croatia went like, oh, we are way more depressed than uh, Serbia. And Serbia like, we are way more depressed. We live in holland ground. And then uh, Helsinki said, hold my beer. <laughs> No, no, don't, don't hold my beer. I want to have it. I need to lubricate my soul. It makes the voices go away. But yes, I always love, I love, I love doing stand-up in Finland. I was, I, I got to admit, uh, first time when I came to Finland to do stand-up, I was kind of worried because I wasn't really sure if Finnish people could laugh. I, uh, I, I because, uh, you know, uh, I, I, uh, before I did stand-up, I was only doing these uh, cartoon books, which are very popular in Finland, you know? They are, yeah, thank you, thank you. Like, uh, like they're very badly drawn joke books about uh, cannibalism and murder and uh, domestic violence and other family values. It's very popular in Finland <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> I mean, I, but, but you know, I, I, the, why, uh, the reason I was worried because I'd never seen uh, a Finnish person laugh before I did stand up. I went to these uh, book festivals to promote my books and I saw Finnish people read my books, but I never saw them laugh. <laughs> so I just assumed that in Finland, my books aren't really joke books. <laughs> They're just a collection of facts. <laughs> yes, interesting. True, true, done that, done that, done that, that is my mother, that is my sister, oh, that is my sister and my mother, they are the same person. 
an Icelandic person shouldn't make fun of the inbreeding of Finland. <laughs> But yeah, I, yeah, I've been traveling around and uh, I really wanted to do all of the Nordic countries. I really wanted to uh, do Norway, but they didn't want me. Uh, <laughs> for some reason, I don't understand. I really wanted to do Norway because they have money. And also, I, uh, like, I'm very fascinated by Norwegian culture. I'm uh, like getting into black metal and uh, the black metal in uh, Norway is uh, just amazing. The metal hats in Norway, they are not kidding around. They are not poses at all. There are bands in Norway that actually eat human flesh and burn down churches and worship Satan. And Oslo is like the heroine uh, capital of Europe. But uh, still, they sound so fucking jolly all the time. <laughs> uh, we must uh, sacrifice our children to Satan and uh, drink the blood of the innocent. And after we have finished the sucking Lucifer's cock, <laughs> we will have some heroin. <laughs> so I don't understand why, like, I think I would have gone very well. <laughs> I like Satan. I like blood. Why won't they have me? Another country, <laughs> another country that, uh, mm, uh, I was, go was going to do a show in Sweden, in, in Malmö. And, uh, and, uh, but the, they didn't sell any tickets. Nobody wants me <laughs> over in Sweden either. So, but, but, but I'm kind of glad because I was very, like, stressed about uh, performing in Sweden because I hear that Sweden is the most politically correct country in the world. So I'd probably just spend my whole time on stage apologizing. <laughs> just be like, Förlåt, snälla. I, I, I was actually... <laughs> I was actually uh, brought up in Sweden. I li uh, like I spent my first, the first three years of my life in Sweden, and uh, all the, the only words I can remember from my childhood, I only remember like ten words from my childhood. Like förlåt snälla lilla gumman, varför har du inga kläder på? Which, uh, <laughs> I don't know why these are the words I remember from my sweetest childhood. Something horrible must have happened, probably, or or, or wonderful. I don't know. But, you know, we are aware of this, like, uh, like uh, uh, all of the Nordic countries, we like, we are, uh, we are brethren, uh, uh, but uh, we are also very different, and uh, I feel like Hollywood doesn't really acknowledge the fact how different all the Nordic countries are, because whenever I see a Hollywood movie and there is, like, a Nordic person in the movie, if it's a Danish person or a Swedish person or a Finnish person or not, or a Norwegian person or an Icelandic person, uh, they all sound the same. They all sound like the Swedish chef from the Muppets, like... <laughs> he doesn't even sound Swedish. He sounds very Norwegian, actually. He's a Norwegian chef. Because, yeah, Nor Norwegians, they sound like this. <laughs> and uh, uh, Swedish people, they sound like this. And Danish people sound like this. It's like if a, if a Norwegian person had sniffed too much glue, or or, or if, 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 if Sweden never had evolution, you know? It's just, it's just, <laughs> uh, I did learn. Um, I did learn uh, English from uh, uh, American movies. Uh, I did learn uh, very short American movies. Uh, very cheap American movies. Nobody wears any clothes <laughs> in those movies. Uh, every single film ends with somebody having to wash their face. It's, uh, they're available on certain streaming sites. I'm not gonna tell you which one. Uh, well, it, it starts with a P uh, <clears throat> and it ends with Ornhub. And, uh, <laughs> Learning, learning English uh, from uh, that kind of, uh, 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 those kinds of films, it's uh, not a good idea. <laughs> I mean, it, it kind of messes up with your vocabulary. I mean, it's so, like, it's uh, some of those phrases that uh, are being said in those films, uh, I can't really wrap my head around. For example, when like somebody is making sweet, sweet love to his lady, which is basically the plot of every single film on those sites. <laughs> But when they go like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh 
baby, oh yeah, oh, uh, oh, you like that baby? Oh yeah, give it to me, baby. Oh, baby, 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 oh, baby, oh, I like that baby, 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 oh, baby, 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 oh, baby, yeah, just like that baby, 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 oh, baby, 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 really. Baby, that's what you're calling the person you're putting your penis inside of, a baby. <laughs> of all the words in the Oxford and Webster's Dictionary, it's the least appropriate thing <laughs> to call someone you're fucking a baby. All the other words in a dictionary are more appropriate than that. Like, oh, yeah, you like that newspaper? Oh, yeah. Give it to me, toaster. Oh, yeah. Oh, take it all, economy. Take it all, economy. <laughs> Disgusting. But that's not the only thing. Like, uh, uh, another thing, uh, like, this is a question that pops up all the time in those artistic documentaries I watch every morning. It's, um... It's like, a, it's, a, it's a question that pops up uh, when, uh, when uh, somebody goes, oh, yeah. Ooh. By the way, this is not the only sexual position I know. <laughs> it's just the one that's easiest to mime on stage. I have a bad back. I'm not going to do the whole missionary. I do not, miss, I know both positions. <laughs> so, like, like, I've had sex like 12 and a half times. You know? But this is uh, like, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do you now. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this is the question. Uh, who's your daddy? Uh, who's your daddy? What kind of question is that? <laughs> what kind of question is that to ask during that? Why, why, are you, I mean, come on, really? I assume that before you went to the bed to have the sex, that you went on a date or something. Why didn't you ask about her parents during dinner? <laughs> why are you, did you save it until then? I don't understand. Tell me about your father. <laughs> he's, he's in the middle management in a, in a bricklaying company. I, I really don't want to talk about him right now. It's kind of like putting me out of the mood. Uh, tell me about your mother. <laughs> and another thing, this is the weirdest thing that they say. In these movies, it's when somebody says, I am a bad motherfucker. Mm. So, like, yeah, Samuel L. Jackson during his porn years. No, no, it's like, it's in all sorts, like, not only in the porn movies, it's in, in all, like, feature-length movies when somebody says, I am a bad motherfucker. Mm. Something you should not brag about <laughs> because I mean come on if you do feel the need to share with us that you are in fact having sexual relations with your mother why oh why do you have to point out that you're bad at it <laughs> We're not gonna feel sorry for you. We're not gonna give you pointers on how to satisfy your mother. We're not gonna show you your mother's clitoris on a diagram. Go like, focus on this spot. Then your mother fucking won't be that bad. I don't wanna have that conversation. I'd rather have a conversation with someone who is a great motherfucker. I'm a great motherfucker. I made my mama come twice last night. Mm. She loves me. Yeah. <laughs> when I came out of her, I just went back in, you know. <laughs> Gave her an orgasm before I could talk. <clears throat> now, but I, 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 I quit watching porn because uh, I don't understand it. There's a lot of things that are uh, happening in porn that I don't find sexy at all. And I mean, I'm not judging. If you like that sort of thing, like own it, go for it. Just be yourself. But I personally, I don't find 
it's very sexy when somebody comes into uh, somebody's face. I never get why, why that happens, like in porn movies. But apparently they like it in the porn movies. I mean, the, the, the ones that are expecting the come in the face, they look like they haven't seen rain in two months. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't understand why every single porn film ends with that scene. Why does it always end that way? I mean, why, I want to know what happens next. I have so many questions. But like, where is this relationship going? Well, <laughs> I don't understand, like, when they go like, yeah, oh, yeah. Mm. Sister. Obviously, that is not the sound of ejaculation. <laughs> Just want to, you know, my penis does not sound like that. When I, come. I don't, don't have, like, a medical situation going on. I mean, it doesn't make a sound, but I'm just doing it. I'm doing it for artistic and narrative purposes, you know? Like, it would be funny if it would make a sound like a, like a, or just a, it's like messy and it's disgusting. I mean, I, I would love if it would be something else, you know? If you could have like a, a Snapchat filter on our penis, <laughs> do a rainbow, <laughs> like bubbles or stars, like do the little doggy face, you know, on the penis with ears and a nose and the tongue that goes. So you like get oral and penetration at the same time? I don't know, well, it's a suggestion. <laughs> no, now I don't understand. Why does it always end there? What happens next? When they go like, oh, yeah. Uh, well, there you go. <clears throat> Do you mind if we don't cuddle afterwards? It's uh, <laughs> kind of yucky. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I will go get some tissue. I'm sorry, I, I don't know what came over me. It's, uh, I know what came over you. <laughs> uh, not, not funny, no, 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 okay. So uh, are we meeting your parents this weekend? <laughs> Should I bring something? <laughs> there are a lot of things in porn that kind of just, I don't, that doesn't look comfortable at all. For example, when somebody's choking on a cock. I don't understand that, you know. Doesn't like they, they need to breathe. Why? I mean, like when they're going, uh, oh yeah, baby. Uh, obviously, she can't talk. <laughs> she can't talk while doing that. That would that would be a cool trick, though. <laughs> oh yeah, baby, you like that? So how are you doing? <laughs> how are you doing tonight? <laughs> Tell me about your father. <laughs> <laughs> how are you doing this? Well, it takes years of practice. <laughs> For the first 14 months, I sounded like a Danish person, you know. <laughs> now, shut up and let me do talking. No, it's a, I find it kind of, I find it kind of uncomfortable to look at someone going like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> old-fashioned, but I don't want to... I want to see my penis and somebody go... Aah! at the same time, because it reminds me of my childhood, and I uh, really don't want to go there. I have wake memories. I think there was a naked, sweetest old lady there. <laughs> but my porn these days is... Uh, it's Marvel movies. Uh, I am a nerd, I've always been a nerd, and I am experiencing, as are all nerds these days, something that we call the nerd spring, when every other movie is a Spider-Man movie, and um, like uh, the last Spider-Man movie I saw, it was like, it was like a bang gang movie. Gang bang, bang gang, gang bang. <laughs> movie for me. <laughs> bang gang, I think, is an Icelandic band. <laughs> oh, it's like, the gangbang movie for me because there were like seven Spider-Man in it. The, the, the regular Spider-Man and the black Spider-Man and the black and white Spider-Man and the robot Spider-Man and the lady Spider-Man and the Japanese Spider-Man and the pig Spider-Man. I was like, oh, uh, just, just shot my webs into my underpants. And um, 
Yeah, but uh, now that uh, nerd culture has become very popularized, very mainstream, I like I I feel like I'm a hipster asshole sometimes when I like uh, because people are because I'm the one who read the books way before you saw the movies <laughs> and have so fun at parties and uh, but I see. See these people out there that are pretending to be nerds, but <laughs> they are not. <laughs> I saw this one guy who was uh, wearing a Spider-Man t-shirt uh, the other day, and I knew he wasn't a real geek. He was just a hipster poser pretending to be a nerd because it's popular these days. And it just got on my nerves. Uh, uh, so I decided to unveil his lies to uncover his treachery. So I interrogated him, I like <laughs> put a lamp in his face behind the table. And, uh, and I so, uh, okay, you obviously love Spider-Man, so uh, riddle me this. In uh, which issue is the first appearance of Spider-Man? And he goes, ah, Spider-Man number one. I go, ha, wrong! Wrong, you poser, you asshole, you piece of shit, you motherfucker, you douchebag, you piece of nothing. You do not deserve to wear that t-shirt. It was in Amazing Fantasy number 15. You would know that if you were a real geek, but you're not. You do not deserve to wear that t-shirt. Take it off. Take it off. It didn't go over too well because he was only five years old. And, uh, <laughs> Now I have like this restraining order. <laughs> Learn something new every day. You know, I can't come within 50 yards of children in Spider-Man t-shirts. It's a very specific restraining order. It's political correctness gone mad. <laughs> but I was uh, born in 77, which is the quintessential year in nerd culture, in nerd history. It's the year zero in nerd history because 77 is the year when uh, Star Wars happened. I am as old as Star Wars. And uh, like I told you, um, I was brought up in Sweden, so uh, my first Star Wars memories were in uh, Swedish. Lucas. You're in pop boy. It's such, a, it's such a stupid joke, but it's not as stupid as the next one. Um, <laughs> this is a character I made up, especially for, uh, for uh, stand-up. Uh, this is the character called the Sexist Star Wars Nerd. This is the Sexist Star Wars Nerd. He looks exactly like me. So, <laughs> So, uh, you guys want to hear my Star Wars impressions? Okay, 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 okay. This is Darth Vader. Okay, and uh, this is Chewbacca. Okay, and, uh, and, and this is Princess Leia. Oh, don't clap, it was a stupid joke. And I always feel stupid after telling that joke, but not only because it's stupid and outdated, uh, but also it's very unfair towards my uh, first love, Princess Leia. Uh, when, I, uh, when I saw Star Wars number one, also known as Star Wars number four, also known as A New Hope, uh, I fell in love with Princess Leia. I mean, she was so cool. She set the standard. That, that was my type. From then on, my type is just princesses with guns. I have, I have a very high standard. <laughs> I'm gonna die alone. Uh, I will never find happiness. But uh, yeah, but you know, she's a cool character. She doesn't take any shit. But then later, when I saw Star Wars number three, also known as Star Wars number six, also known as Return of the Jedi, I had my first sexual feelings. Because if you're from the Stone Age, like I am, you will remember that in Return of the Jedi, that's the scene where Princess Leia wears the golden bikini. Oh, that was, yes, exactly. 
Some of you guys got like a semi chubby right now, just because of the mention of the golden bikini. I mean, when I saw that scene for the first time, like strange things are happening in my pants. Like I, 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 I she was so sexy, and uh, th that scene just like it changed the sexual preferences of all the nerds in the galaxy. When I like now from then on, like that's been the most popular nerd fantasy, sexual fantasy, to s sleep with someone who was wearing the golden bikini from Return of the Jedi. <laughs> and uh, I actually once had a girlfriend that did that for me. Yes. She like went through the trouble uh, of going to eBay and, uh, and uh, finding uh, an exact replica of the golden bikini from Return of the Jedi and she uh, surprised me. She came into my room wearing the golden bikini. She even had those buns in her hair. And I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Seriously, dude, come on. Really? I mean, she wore the golden bikini in Return of the Jedi, but the buns in A New Hope. This doesn't make any sense. What are you doing? Get out! Get out! Blasphemer! <laughs> but then later on, uh, when I became a more adult and uh, uh, more woke, I realized that that particular scene in Return of the Jedi, it's problematic. It's, uh, it's not, I mean, it's not, it's not very fair towards Princess Leia because essentially in that scene, she is a sex slave. She is, like, she is chained. She has chains around her neck. She is chained to this giant thing called uh, Jabba the Hutt, who is like this space gangster. He looks like a giant slug. He looks like a green turd. And uh, she, he, he, he is like a gangster, and uh, he has her as a, uh, as a sex prisoner. And uh, he was always like, Misa Tupa, Gita La Supaka, Solo, Ho Ho Ho. She's like, ah, totally ugh, not into him. Of course she isn't, because he is a space turd, and she is human. She, she, would, she is into other humans, like her brother. And, <laughs> But, she, but he, he is really into her. He's like, hello, Uba, hello. But uh, I don't understand, because he is a different species. He should be into other space turds. I mean, wh what does he want to do with her? It, does he have a penis? I, th I don't know. I think he is a penis. Uh, I, I, I don't know how it would work. It's, uh, it's probably a porn out there that's like that. But uh, yeah, but why does he, why does he want her? It's, it's, I know he's a gangster. Um, but, it's, uh, but it's not very gangster to want to fuck other species. Ex unless that's what Snoop is talking about when he's talking about fucking bitches. But I don't think that's what he, like, um, because it's like, if a, it's like if a giraffe would want to fuck a, a, a parrot. It's like, if a, it's like if a human wants to fuck a sheep, which is not that very, not very uncommon in Iceland, actually. <laughs> it's like if, a, if I would dress uh, uh, a hamster in a tiny little golden bikini. <laughs> We're like, Misa Tuba ka ho ho ho. Mom! I told you to knock, Mom! I'm playing Star Wars. You're ruining it for me. Yes, yes, I know. I'm gonna move out as soon as I come back from Helsinki. Just let, just let me finish this. I'm getting in there. And now I have a restraining order. I learn something new every day. I can't come within 50 yards of uh, hamsters and golden bikinis. It's a very specific restraining order. It's a political correctness gone mad. <laughs> but uh, I am single. <laughs> yes, I know. Surprise. <laughs> and that means that I am uh, yet again staring into the bottomless black pit of despair and anguish. We call Tinder. Uh, who, who, here, who here is on Tinder? Okay, three people, yeah. That's, the, you just broke the record. So it's, nobody ever admits it. <laughs> no, I think all of you are on Tinder, really. I think most of you are on Tinder, except for you who are in a relationship you're on something called uh, Ashley Madison. But Tinder, 
The Inter is uh, for those who uh, uh, pretend not to uh, know what it is. It's, a, it's an app. It's an app for uh, single people and uh, serial killers. <laughs> so you can actually see how far away your prey is. <laughs> she is 20 kilometers away. You will find her. You will find her in your cellar next to your dead mother. I don't know why my serial killer sounds like Liam Neeson. <laughs> I have a very particular set of skills. Also, I'm kind of racist. But yes, Tinder, uh, make, Tinder has the ability to make you feel super creepy and super lonely at the same time. Super lonely, especially in Iceland, because we have a very limited uh, amount of people and uh, so you only have to uh, swipe like two or three times before it goes like there is no one new around you <laughs> there is nobody for you nobody loves you see your little face in the middle of the screen with that sonar thing around it like a submarine sonar thing ding just reminding you of your loneliness. Ding! You're like a lonely submarine in a sea of loneliness looking for other lonely submarines. Ding! Ding! But then you do get this stack of women. <laughs> it's a very serial killer thing to say. I have a stack of women in my cellar next to my dead mother. <laughs> now you do get like this stack, you get this, uh, like a digital stack of photographs of women, which you swipe right or left, depending on if you want to uh, spend time, spend time with them or not. And then you feel like a hedonistic Roman emperor looking for a sex slave for tonight's orgy, like, oh, oh, no. This one is way out of my league. Yes. Oh, this one likes to do outdoor stuff. No. This one is probably not even real. I mean, I think it's a picture of Scarlett Johansson. Just in case, yes. Ooh. This one has no pictures of her legs. I'm guessing she has no legs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Super creepy, super creepy. That's, that's why I quit Tinder and uh, started again the next day. <laughs> because that's how Tinder works. It's like drug addiction. You know, you're like, uh, what's wrong with me? Please come back. It's just, uh, I mean, I, I quit Tinder all the time <clears throat> because it's messing up with my mind. I'm taking the Tinder mentality out into reality, going into bars like, <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Stay. 
So yeah. You are just, if you're a man on Tinder, you're a creep. That's your default setting. As a man, as a man. It's just like today, being a man is just a full-time job trying to not look like a creep. Like every, every man in here is like, don't be a creep, don't be a creep, don't be a creep, all the time. But as a man on Tinder, you are by default a creep because I've seen the uh, Tinder apps uh, on uh, my, like, uh, my, my female friends' phones and I've seen them swipe, it's like creep, 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 creep. That last one was me. And, uh, <laughs> but they try not to look like creeps. They have a, like a, in their profile a, a, a text that says, hey, I'm just looking for someone with a great sense of humor and uh, someone I can hang around with, you know, go for walks, uh, maybe have like deep conversations with. And they have this smile that says, my penis is lonely. And, uh, and on, on all, like on my, my Tinder, every, every single profile has a text that reminds you that you are a potential creep because it says, no creeps, please. No one night stands. No dick pics, please. Of course, of course I'm not gonna send a dick pic. You can't send pictures through Tinder. I've tried it, but also, <laughs> I would never send a dick pic. I don't understand why people do that, send dick pics. Why do men, why do, there's so many men that do this all the time, they send a dick pic. Why are they sending a picture of that? The least attractive part of the male body. I mean, come on. I see how, I see how the human man can be an attractive creature, but like a, like an aerodynamic ape. It's like a, a and then this this thing, there's this thing hanging there, like it doesn't belong. <laughs> Looks like a tumor. <laughs> Looks like something that grew in Chernobyl. <laughs> Looks like something from a Cronenberg movie or a, a Lovecraft novel. <laughs> like, a, like a, a retarded elephant fetus at best. <laughs> <laughs> I just like making that sound. <laughs> I think if penises could talk, they would sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the sound inside every woman's head when she sees a penis. <laughs> like a. <laughs> this should be like this should be like a, a setting on your phone, so whenever you get a dick pic, it goes like. <laughs> Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's, it's like whenever your boyfriend is going, hey, uh, it's Valentine's Day, and I uh, saw that uh, Love Actually is on Netflix, and I bought a couple of very expensive bottles of red wine. I thought maybe we could uh, drink that wine and watch the movie, and then later go to the bedroom. All she hears is... <laughs> It's like, some, it's, it's like something from a horror film. It's like, hello? Hello? Is anybody there? <laughs> Guys, it's not funny. Come out. <laughs> anybody? <laughs> this is always the face. <laughs> no, I don't understand why they're sending a picture of that, 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 that thing that when erect looks like the head of the alien from Alien. Like, it's, like and I, I saw Predator again the other day when Predator, Predator takes off his mask. He looks like a vagina. <laughs> so it explains my erection when I saw Alien vs. Predator. <laughs> it was uh, porn in disguise. <laughs> no, I don't understand why they're sending it because, I mean, I mean oh, like of all the women I know who have gotten sent a dick pic, which are all the women I know, none of them. I slept with a guy who just sent this pic out of the blue. 
So why are they sending it? Because obviously they, they are craving companionship. I mean, they do want to have the sexual relations. Why are they ending the conversation with that? They're ruining everything for themselves. Why are they doing it? I, I, my theory is that mm, maybe it's because of a uh, lack of vocabulary. <laughs> Just the, I already said hi. <laughs> I even added a WhatsApp. <laughs> how can I, I mean, how can I tell her how I feel? <laughs> what, what is she not getting? Here? I mean, how can I explain? How can I explain my meanings? I wish I could convey my feelings. I guess the only way to open up my heart is sending her today some <laughs> photographic art, a picture of my meanings, <laughs> a picture of my feelings, a picture of my, picture of my, Penis doesn't really rhyme that well with feelings. <laughs> I'm uh, still working on that song, you know, working on a musical. Um, it's gonna be called the ha hashtag Me Too musical. It's, uh, it's gonna be a hit. <laughs> no, she's not gonna lose her shit. Nobody loses their shit. And I've never seen like a girl get, get a dick pic like, you win! <laughs> oh yes! A dick, a close up of a pee hole. It's just, I don't know, why? They're not gonna, they, that's not like, they're not gonna go like, mm. <laughs> eh. They're not gonna turn into Samuel L. Jackson for some reason. Eh. That's a fine motherfucker. <laughs> And take that motherfucker, stick it up inside of me. <laughs> no, she's not, like, they're not gonna, that's not the reaction. Like, they're not gonna go like, what a magnificent member you have. Oh, I love the curve here between the wrinkled scrotum and the veiny shaft. Oh, and those pubes. So thick, like a jungle. Mwah. I want to get lost in this jungle but be able to find my way back home by using this magnificent tower as a beacon. <laughs> I want to climb this tower like a prince in a fairy tale. <laughs> I want to engulf this tower. I don't know, like a, like a shark swallows a seal in slow motion in a David Attenborough movie. I don't know, I need more metaphors for this joke. But no, that's not a realistic reaction to the penis. A realistic reaction would be, well, there it is. That's a penis. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to point at you. <laughs> mean to point at you. But yeah, you, you, you are a penis. You are a, you are a man attached to a penis. Together you are one. <laughs> Own it. No, it's not like, like, we go, we go oh, that's, a, that's a penis, there it is. I guess I better put it inside of me so I don't have to look at it any longer. <laughs> yeah, that's how, that's why we have sex. That's why, that's how, that's how evolution happened. That's how humanity happened. We were all, they were just, what is this? We have to hide this, let's put it somewhere. <laughs> let's put this somewhere, no one can see it. I don't know, just here, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, thank God. And that's how children were made. That's how we happened. It's, that's why it's so ugly. Yeah, I think we're learning something here. <laughs> I shouldn't be drinking this. I'm not allowed to drink this. I'm not allowed to drink beer. I will explain. You see, uh, it was maybe, I guess, uh, three or four years ago when I uh, traveled to uh, California 
and I uh, met a Californian lady. And uh, you know, I can't resist those Californian girls. They like just just the way they sound like oh my God. just uh, <laughs> so sexy. Yeah. You know. Oh my God. Oh my God. You're from Iceland. Oh my God. <laughs> so I was like, I couldn't resist it. <laughs> so uh, we had sex, and we had unprotected sex. And kids always wear a condom. You have to wear a condom to uh, avoid the sexually transmitted diseases like uh, chlamydia and children. So if I, uh, and I learned that the hard way because I, uh, yeah, I slept with her and then later I, I, I have a, got a, a phone call from her. She's like, oh, God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> told me that uh, I had contracted a disease from her. A disease that I now have to live with. I can't get rid of it. It's called gluten intolerance. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> means that I'm not allowed to drink beer. I'm not allowed to drink beer, I'm not allowed to eat hamburgers, I'm not allowed to eat pizza, I'm basically allergic to happiness. <laughs> because now, now that I'm drinking this beer, that means that I can't really take a lady home to my masturbation chamber, to my, to my hotel room, to my hotel room. Sorry, that was a Freudian slip. <laughs> I hate it when that happens, when you fuck the wrong mother. Ah, say the wrong word, when you say the wrong word. But yeah, I can't take a lady home uh, after drinking beer because that means she will wake up next to a belly full of gas. <laughs> because that's what happens when a gluten intolerant person puts a gluten in their body, like uh, air will accumulate, like gas will accumulate in uh, overnight and she will wake up next to the belly full of gas. She, you will wake up like pregnant with farts. <laughs> And you have to let them out because it's not healthy to keep those farts in. But you can't let them out because she will hear it. She will hear the farting sound, which is the least sexy sound in the universe. And definitely not the, uh, what my penis sounds like when I come. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's not a sexy sound. So, but, uh, so I have to hold them in. But uh, like, because if she hears the farting sound, I won't be having uh, the, the morning sex. I will be prevented from having the morning sex. And I really do want to have the morning sex because morning sex is the best sex because that's the sex you can remember. So I have to, I have to, so you try to hold them in, but that also makes a sound, a sound that we uh, Icelanders call the whale song. When your belly goes like, oh. <laughs> A lonely fart in the darkness looking for an exit. <laughs> Finally finds its way towards the exit and you go like, no! Not today, fart. Oh. <laughs> you never felt so sorry for a fart before, right? <laughs> Goes back up inside your body where it doesn't belong. Farts belong outside your body. That's how they become farts. There's no term for a fart before it leaves your body. It's like an undiagnosed fart. It's a, it's a, it's a fart fetus. So like the farts begin at birth. It's like I, I would abort it with a wire hanger if I could, but I can't. I've tried it. It's very messy. Don't do it. So we all know this trick where we kind of try to sneak it out silently. To, to, to the fart whisper. 
by like separating the ass cheeks. <laughs> because we all know this, this is science. <laughs> we have, we've all tried this, we've all done this, we've all taken our phone and then like uh, videotaped our ass <laughs> while farting and then played it back in slow motion. We've all done this. <laughs> So when you do that, you will find out, you will learn that when you are fasting, it's basically your ass cheeks clapping. You know, that's, that's the sound, like, it's in slow motion. Like, we all have different ass claps. Some of us have like a golf clap, like. I have like this slow, sarcastic clap, like. Oh, you're leaving fart. Oh, so sad. Because, you know, the, the ass is clapping because it basically is just celebrating the leaving of the farts. Like, yeah, get out. You're not welcome here. But, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, we, 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 we do this all the time where we sneak a fart out uh, by separating the ass cheeks, by lifting up like one ass cheek. Also makes a sound, actually, like pssst. And I live in a very quiet neighborhood <laughs> in Reykjavik. And uh, so she's gonna hear that. So uh, here's the trick. You have to incorporate that sound into the conversation. <laughs> go like, hey, psst. You were so fine uh, on a dance floor last night. Sexy as hell. So maybe you wanna order some uh, Chinese? Food. <laughs> but that's only if I drink beer. If I would eat something solid with gluten in it, like a, a piece of, like a, a pizza slice or a hamburger, I would get what the Germans call glutenscheiße. <coughs> I actually told this joke uh, and, and when I was in Germany, the land of comedy. When I was in the... <laughs> I was in Germany and afterwards a German lady came uh, to me and she says, actually it is pronounced gluten scheißerei. <laughs> I was like, could you be any more German? Nein! <laughs> and then she interrogated me about the microfilm. But uh, <laughs> gluten scheiße is a, it's a very like, a, it's a very aggressive form of diarrhea. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, some of you people might even have gluten intolerance and don't even know it. Uh, but you will know it if your bowel movements uh, sound like this. <laughs> it starts out pretty innocently. By the way, I am 41 years old. <laughs> yeah. This is what I'm doing with my life right now. Just describing my anal sounds in great detail in a microphone in front of strangers. This is my midlife crisis. My, my mother is so proud because she thinks I'm a chiropractor. But uh, <laughs> it starts. Uh, starts out pretty innocently, but then there are like pockets of air. Pockets of air like lined up in your rectum that uh, when exiting your body, it will create a noise and a mess that's not appealing at all. So it starts out pretty innocently, goes like My baby! 
baby. <sighs> Lucas, you have the end Make America great again. This is just a... Uh, it's like your... <laughs> It's like it's like your anus is a broken paintball gun, and uh, <laughs> afterwards the toilet bowl looks like a Dalmatian dog. It's just ab absolutely spotted, and um, <clears throat> but you know I think we, there should be more discussion about gluten shies uh, and uh, you know gluten intolerance. I don't think I feel like there's not not enough talk about it. I mean, there's people should be educated. I mean, there should be a Netflix like a documentary about gluten intolerance. I think Werner Herzog should do a, like a, a documentary about a gluten intolerance, like... As I gaze upon <laughs> the violent mess hiding like a coward behind a mountain of toilet paper, <laughs> I wonder, is there such a thing as a gluten-free world? <laughs> I do not believe in this magical world of the poop. There is only chaos and murder <laughs> and gluten jizz. I think, I mean, uh, I'm gonna try, like if, yeah, I'm gonna try to stop. I'm, I, I really have to, I mean, I can't be, uh, I can't have my body sounding like that for the rest of my life. I, I mean, I don't wanna die alone and, uh, you know, I don't want to have to turn on the radio every time I go to poop. So I guess I have to just stop putting gluten in my body, and I will. <laughs> just as soon as, like, I will, as soon as this tour is over. Like, I will do it next week. I will do it uh, next uh, uh, century. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I mean, uh, yes, maybe my next job, I could work on it, like, be, have, like, be a goal to be the most gluten-free person in, on the planet. I could be, like, a spokesperson for gluten intolerance. I could do TED Talks. What if I told you? <laughs> what if I told you? That one day your po uh, bowel movements don't have to look like a Jackson Pollock painting. <laughs> you can look like a bullet. It's been shot by a sniper with a silencer. It'll go like... Even have a laser pointer, so can <laughs> assassinate a president from two other yards. <laughs> It'll be so hard I can cut glass with it. Like I will become the poop burglar. And, and when I when I fart, when when I sit on a toilet, it won't. I won't even make the farting sound. I won't even make the uh, the ass clapping sound. Because when I let the air out, it will sound more like an elven song from the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> so when I place my buttocks upon the porcelain throne, <laughs> it will sound like. <laughs> <laughs> and I will be so skilled at pooping that I don't even have to wipe my ass afterwards <laughs> because it will exit my body without even touching the walls of my rectum. <laughs> Just like a... <laughs> and like an Olympic diver. It won't even make a splash when it hits the water. <laughs> Just a... <laughs> and one drop of water will rise up and kiss my anus. <laughs> as if to say thank you. <laughs> and thank you so much for coming here tonight. You've been a great audience. I just love it. I mean... Probably the best show. Oh, God. 
It was amazing. It was amazing. I do, uh, do want to end this thing on uh, uh, some thoughts, uh, like a thought that I've been having uh, recently. Uh, like, uh, like uh, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> a contemplation, if you will. Uh, like, uh, because I've been wondering, uh, like I said, it's a strange thing, a strange job to be a comedian and uh, yeah, especially today, because we live in a very, like, politically correct uh, age. Uh, there are people out there that are telling you what you can and what you can't joke about. And there are comedians out there that are saying that political correctness is killing comedy. I do not necessarily agree with that. I think comedy is going to be fine. Nothing can kill comedy. There are, like, 1,100 Netflix specials on uh, Netflix, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Like to paraphrase Jeff Goldblum in uh, Jurassic Park, uh, comedy, ah, 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 finds a way. So <laughs> I've, I'm not worried about comedy at all. And uh, I, I have nothing against politically correct people. Some of my best friends are politically correct. So I, I, th I think that actually like the PC police, as they are called, is uh, like uh, they are uh, uh, essential and necessary part of uh, the comedy ecosystem. We need people to draw a line in the sand so we know which line to cross when we are telling a joke. <laughs> so, and I, I get why, like, I, I mean, that's, that's the, why you are a comedian. I get why, like, uh, I get why people get hurt when you do a joke about a sensitive or a volatile or a, or a, or a very flammable subject matter. I know, I understand that people get hurt. Uh, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you are offended by something uh, disgusting, be offended, be a pussy. But, uh, <laughs> but, but I remember like, oh, like, maybe it's an Icelandic thing. It's probably a Finnish thing as well. Like all of the first, like the first jokes that I learned, they were very un PC. Like when I was in the playground, the jokes that uh, I was, uh, that the other kids told me, they were very politically incorrect. They were like racist jokes, and they were, they were sexist jokes, and they were homophobic jokes. And I do try to stay away from that kind of humor. It's hard sometimes when you're on stage, <laughs> because you just, your mouth is moving and words are coming out, especially if they're written on a teleprompter, like, you know. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> no, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but uh, I'm not, <clears throat> I try to, I don't want to tell like a homophobic, well, <laughs> I, I do want to, okay, here's the thing. I'm gonna try something out. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna tell a gay joke. I'm gonna tell my favorite gay joke and here, yeah. Here, I am a straight man that's about to tell a gay joke on stage. It's uh, apparently not cool these days, understandably. I should not be, may, be making fun of minorities that are not me. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, but you know, here's the thing. People ask me, all the time, uh, can you joke about anything? And my answer is yes, you can, as long as you do it with love. Because love is the secret ingredient to all creative process. If you tell, some, say something disgusting, but if you do it with love, you will probably <laughs> get <laughs> I'm just trying to be philosophical here. I mean, and I, 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 I even pronounce philosophical correctly. But, uh, I mean, you can't, like, if you, say, if you say a joke with hatred, it's not gonna be funny. There's no such thing as a funny fascist. There's, like, he, Hitler, he looked funny. But if you understand German, what he's saying, not that funny. Like, his material is all over the place, he doesn't really have, know how to do setups, and his punchlines punch are just, just tacky, I mean. Like, you can joke about genocide, but don't do it. <laughs> the difference between, like, imagination and opinion, you know. So, um, yeah, but, uh, but this, this joke, this gay joke, I think it's a joke that is told with a lot of love. And um, it's, a, it's a question, actually. The question is, uh, how can you spot a gay shark? Uh, don't, if you know the answer, don't shout it out. One, one time, actually, one person shouted out, you mean a dolphin? <laughs> Which I find 
a very funny accent. <laughs> Dolphins are like gay sharks. But um, no, 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 not cool, not cool. Dolphins. But um, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, okay, the question is how can you spot a gay shark? And you will know it's a gay shark by this sound. Da -da. Da -da. Da -da. Da -da. Da -da. Da -da. I love you, baby. And if it's quite all right, I need you, baby, to warm my lonely nights. I love you, baby. I trust in me when I say, Oh, pretty baby, don't bring me down. Ah! Pray, oh pretty babe, now that I found you to stay. And let me love you. Blah, blah. Let me love you. Thank you so much for coming here tonight. This has been the last time I will do any of this. And you have been the perfect audience for it. I do love you. Thank you.